Testing. <laughs> if you're going to do it, own it. Amen. Play D. Oh, yeah, and that's when we got to move the pump. Yeah, we got to move the pump. Like, she just got two babies. Last night, just you and me this week. Hey, we got ten of us. Oh, Clay.
Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in your midst. You may be seated. You may be seated. So it's good to know. testimony, Karen. Thank you. <clears throat> in your bulletin is a connection card. Uh, make sure you fill that out uh, by the end of the service, and then you can put it on the table back there. If you have any communication for the church office or uh, for me, you can put it uh, in there as well. And uh, <coughs> again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to all who have worked on the tomb. And uh, we're kind of feeling it today a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and those who have fixed food, uh, this has been uh, quite the process. Uh, thank you, Jerry, for uh, leading us through that. And uh, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And uh, we think it's going to be there soon. You know, have you ever uh, driven towards the mountains and you think you're going to be there sooner than what it actually, <laughs> you actually get there, finally do <coughs> get there, and that's going to happen. But what a test Bruce and I were talking yesterday is like what a statement we are making to the community and ultimately to the world about the resurrection of Jesus Christ Amen. from the dead. Amen. And uh, that is what we're wanting. And thank you for all of you who uh, were part of the blood drive this last week. And uh, it's very, very needed and we thank you for doing that. This coming Tuesday, today's Sunday, tomorrow's Monday, that makes it Tuesday when? Two days from now. Okay? <laughs> First Tuesday of the month. What does that mean to us here at Northview? Pray for what? Branch County. Tuesday, the first Tuesday of the month is our day to pray for Mount Branch County. Now, last month we had nine people sign up uh, for one of the watch hours. There's eight watch hours in a day. 12369, and there's another one, 12369. And uh, I'll talk about it during the message as well. Uh, but if there would be more who would sign up for w one of those watches, oh, God bless you. <laughs> uh, then um, our daughter just walked in, sorry. <laughs> and son in law. Thanks, Chief. <laughs> Thanks, sorry guys, for messing us up. <laughs> You had to walk in while I was looking right there. So. <laughs> oh. so we're praying for Branch County on Tuesday, and um, uh, it's something we're going to do every month. So if you would like to sign up for one of the watch hours, uh, do that. It's, it's on the kiosk back there. Uh, also, Wednesday night, again, I'll talk about this during the message, but we're resuming our Wednesday night uh, group. And uh, I want to put a special push uh, for this week because we're going to start a three-part video on the fastest growing church in the world. And uh, we're going to be looking at that and learning some things about who and what and how. And uh, it shows you that, I'll just say this, it shows you that God is at work in even the darkest places on this earth. It's truly amazing. So, uh, men, one week from tomorrow night is the annual steak and shrimp dinner at Lake James. And uh, are we going to leave from here or we're going to leave from the Kellogg uh, parking lot across from my house? Yeah, let's meet at the Kellogg parking lot around 10 after 5 across the road from Jeff's house and then we'll carpool down there. Uh, I'm going down this week and I'll let the camp know that we'll have about, you know, about a dozen coming down so if you want to come just it's eighteen dollars for the meal and we'll meet across the road from jeff say about five ten we'll leave from there all right guys it's good the physical food's good and the spiritual food is really good okay uh beginnings care for life baby bottle campaign how many of you already picked up your baby bottles okay look at that all right so they're in the corner out there in the lobby pick up all month long uh put your change in that bottle or uh, write out a big fat check and stick it in the bottle 
and uh, that'll be really good. Okay, uh, September 16th is also the beginnings open house, so you can go down to their uh, facility there uh, near 12, the corner of Clay and 12, and uh, go through the facility from 1 to 3 p.m. on September 16th. Tours every 15 minutes, and apple dumplings will be served. On Tuesday, September 26th, we'll be taking down the cookies and water and so forth for the Trine University Campus House. And then look in your bulletin for other uh, announcements as well. <coughs> Dennis, would you stand up? <coughs> this is our brother, Dennis Thomas, has been attending here with uh, Steve Smith and uh <coughs> for a while and uh, has expressed his desire to uh, be a member here. You were baptized uh, into Christ back in March. And uh, so I would just like to ask you, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God? Yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Is that what we believe? Amen. Amen. I want to extend to you the right hand of fellowship. <laughs> Welcome to Northview. <coughs> Back here, Kyoko, can you stand? You got the energy to stand here? There we are. <laughs> Two weeks ago, um, on a Tuesday... We baptized Kyoko uh, into Jesus Christ, and oh, what a joy. That she just wore the joy all over <laughs> herself, and it was just such a blessing. And so we wanted to give you your baptismal certificate and just <clears throat> offer another blessing to you. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and then last week, as most of the people had already filtered out of the uh, auditorium, <coughs> Steve comes to me and says, <coughs> Brian wants to be baptized. And so we got it all together. And, and uh, Brian, you can watch it on Facebook if you go to uh, Mary or Brian's Facebook page. And Mary, yeah, and you can, you can watch it there. And, and Brian just uh, felt compelled by the Lord that, that he wanted to be baptized into Christ. Uh, and uh, once, ag once again, so... You're going to come and sing with us. Yay. Another microphone. Okay. All right. Any other announcements? We are going to worship the Lord today with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We're going to start. Uh, Tony's going to. I guess I'll just turn it over to Tony at this point uh, to read. <coughs> okay. Let's all stand this morning as we read from the word of the Lord. <coughs> today we read by Isaiah 40. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Amen. Amen. Days of Elijah.
voice in the dark, a song that lights up the stars, one breath that gives life, one sovereign in power, who speaks with thunder and fire. Thank you.
was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. But sin separated. The breach was far too wide. But from the far side of the chasm, you held So you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. Then there at the cross, you paid the debt I owe, broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I seated.
Well, because, am I on? Can you hear me? Okay. I'm having to modify my delivery here a little bit because of this last song. What a witness. What a song. I mean, if, if you listen to the words, if it doesn't, doesn't get to your heart, you're not listening. I'm going to be reading a little bit out of Psalms here. I was going to do more and talk a little more, but I don't have to now because that song said everything a lot better than I could. I'm not a preacher. <laughs> this is out of Psalms 32. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven. Whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them. And in whose spirit is no deceit. And then the last verse, it's verse 11. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. And the only reason why we can do that is because of what Jesus did on that cross. I'm apologizing a little bit because you may not be able to understand me, but I don't I don't apologize for Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to let you say your own prayer and meditate on what Jesus actually did for us. Thank you. The Spirit of the Lord is in the house this morning. Uh, today's mission moment is the Michigan Christian Campus Ministries. I'm just going to read quickly from the bulletin. Uh, the ultimate goal of MCCM is to see students grow up in their faith. We need that. So that they can graduate from college not just with an academic degree but ready to live a life built on Jesus and the word 
We'd love it when we get to share the gospel with students and baptize them, but we're just as excited about investing in students so that the tiny seed of faith grows and bears fruit in every area of their lives. Let's quickly pray for the Michigan Christian Campus Ministries. Lord, thank you so much for the work that you're doing even now in young people's lives across the world and uh, certainly in, in Lansing. We're grateful. We give you praise. We give you glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Do you know your neighbor's name, at least their first name? Because we're going to pray for our neighbors this morning as we do each Sunday. So take the time to get to know your neighbor's name here just for a moment. let's bow our heads we're praying for our neighbor's healing whatever that healing may be spiritual physical emotional relational however the lord uh, the, the, as brian said the spirit of the lord is among us this morning always is but we sense the awareness of it and uh, lord may your spirit uh, bring healing this morning to us pray for your neighbor Lord, we also pray for those who cannot or could not be here today, even though with their spirit they're with, here, with us here this morning, uh, their bodies just would not allow that to happen. Bring your physical healing to them. Lord, we know and we're praying for you to raise up a new generation of followers of Jesus Christ and we're praying that, Lord, for here in Branch County, Lord, that you would blow across this county and uh, wake up people from slumber that eat that multitudes would lift up their eyes to you and see where their help comes from. It's from you, Lord, the one who made us, the one who made the earth. And Lord, we are praying that you will raise up workers for the harvest field. And, Lord, that we would be those workers. Lord, we're praying that, that you would give each one of us one person, one person to train for Jesus, to follow Jesus in the next year. Lord, we're praying for you to give us courage to speak boldly, to overcome any timidness, we may have in a given moment and just with confidence tell our story, tell your story. Lord, we're praying for our country. Lord, that you would especially bless your servants in high government places who are seeking your will that they may be able to cut through all the clutter and through all the noise and hear your voice as to what they are to do and to be on a daily basis. We thank you, Lord, for our co-workers in Christ all around the world. We are praying together, Lord. Lord Jesus, come quickly. Maranatha. Open our eyes and our ears that we may hear what the Spirit is saying to the church this morning. 
Thank you, Lord, for your presence among us. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> At any point in world history, starting with Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel, <clears throat> we can see that some people are being oppressed by evil power mongers. It is not a new thing. I, it's sometimes we hear, th I hear things and I think, and you think this hasn't happened before? I mean, that's the very reason God destroyed the, wa the world by water in the days of Noah, isn't it? That the world was so wicked he couldn't even find one righteous person and then Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So it started with Cain killing Abel and it has continued through the ages even to today. And so we here in the 21st century, we truly have lived in privileged times in the last 100 years. And yet, in the last 100 years, some of the most horrific atrocities that have been put upon mankind has happened, a well, has, has happened as well, and the U.S., has been involved in just a handful, but there have been many, many, many of them which we have not had a part in at all. The massacres of Stalin, Mao Zedong, Hitler. You wouldn't even know the numbers of the wars of those who have been killed in the wars between China and Japan. I mean, I saw the numbers on the article that I looked at, but they're just unreal. The wars in Indonesia, the wars in Africa, they far exceed any horror that the U.S. has experienced personally biggest horror was probably our own civil war about a million people killed in that war we don't know about most of these I didn't so I looked it up and read it educated myself a little bit but you know what the Lord has seen them all he knows every soul, especially every soul that has had injustice perpetrated against it and those souls who have done the perpetration. The Lord knows, and we have confidence of this. Cain continues to kill Abel and will do so until the Lord returns, brother against brother. This is Labor Day weekend. You know when it started? Any idea? 1882. How many of you knew that now that I reminded you? <laughs> Duh, I don't know. And we celebrate in large part the advancements uh, that came with the Industrial Revolution, but that was in the early 1900s. Back in 1882, there were people who wanted to honor the workers of our nation, and so it began. Social programs were developed so that even the poorest of the poor uh, have been taken care of, either by community benevolence or by government programs. We're very familiar with Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid, where uh, senior citizens and other challenged people uh, can receive a monthly check uh, to help with existence. 
out of all the cultures that have existed in world history, how many of those cultures did you think, do you think had things like Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid? I mean, they've been there, but not like what we have and continue to have, even though we're afraid of what might happen to these things in the near future. Friends, we are privileged. And our country has flourished. But we will always have great challenges. It's not like there's never been challenges, that everything was so good and everything was so great that there weren't challenges and there weren't injustices. There have always been injustices. And there have always been those who are perpetrating those injustices. Whether it's a free society or whether it's a dictatorial society, it all happens all the time. But now... Here, in our day and time, in the United States, our challenges have ex extended into the moral realm in a way like we've never seen before. Traditional values are thrown away, and it's affecting all of us, isn't it? And we're reeling from the consequences of evil people who champion an all-moral philosophy that breaks people in so many different ways. Our neighbors in Vicksburg, Michigan, are suing their school district over a policy that allows boys to use girls' restrooms. And so, you may ask the question, what can we, collectively, in our culture, do? Could we change our country in five to ten years? How about our county? Could we alone, Northview Christian Church, if we set our hearts and minds on it with the help of the Lord, could we change it? Now, let's think about Christianity. In Romans chapter 5, it says this. Paul is writing to the a church that's in Rome, which is in, <coughs> in Italy. <coughs> and he writes, We glory in our sufferings. Hmm. How many of us have had that attitude in the last few years? I guess I could stop there and say amen and say that's our lesson for the week. But I'm not going to. Because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Oh, we know that this morning, don't we? Oh, we do. You see, here's my key verse. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So when Christ died for us, the world was, a, was in a, a not so good place. Six weeks later, six weeks after, Je you see, at, at just the right time. The point is that Jesus did this at just the right time. Perfect timing, God's timing. Six weeks later, the church was born in Greek and Roman society and culture. And uh, the Roman and Greek culture was well developed. The, the, the Romans built roads all throughout the empire. Um, uh, uh, but, but know this, folks. There has never been a perfect culture. 
Not, not in history past, not in history present. There has never been a perfect culture because Satan has always been at work, hard working, to destroy God's ultimate creation. What is God's ultimate creation? It isn't the universe. That is not God's ultimate creation. Pat your heart. Everybody, pat your heart. I, some of you aren't doing it. Pat your heart. You are God's ultimate creation. And we have an enemy of the soul. It isn't these bodies. It's our soul. And so we find ourselves in an interesting place in human history. While the church was born into a world uh, that was exceedingly corrupt, we here in the U.S. have experienced an incredible blessing in the last 200 years. Not perfect, but it's been an incredible blessing. And our country has had a strong Judeo-Christian ethic for our 200-year history plus. But now we see those values eroding back to the time of the Roman Empire. Question. Did the church, a young, fledgling, starting with 12, then 120, and then on day one the church was born, 3,000 plus, did the church have any impact? I, I, you might say, well, I don't, I don't know about year one. I don't know about the first six months. And Well, yeah, we do. We know that the church grew and grew and grew. But then we think about the world. We think about the letter that I just read from. What was the letter? Romans. Where's that? Italy. Oh, you've been listening this morning. Thousands of miles away. And a church has been started there. And churches have been started all over the known world because the 3,000 people that were there on day one, there was about, I don't know, 15, 20 countries listed. The believers in Jesus went back to their homes. And from day one, the gospel was being spread all over the place. And the church was making difference because they knew in their heart of hearts, in their souls, they knew Jesus is the Christ. He's the Savior, and everybody needs him. And so, friends, we can have a tremendous impact on our culture if we follow the Lord's model to go and make disciples and teach them to obey all that he has commanded. So I want to go to the very last three verses of the book of Romans. <clears throat> this is the Great Commission as Paul writes it to the Romans. Now to him who is able to establish you, where? In this world and in heaven. He is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ, in keeping with the revelation of the mystery of mystery hidden for long ages past, but now is revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. It is the Lord's intention that all hear. But there's always a new generation coming up behind, isn't there? There's always a new generation. Always a new generation. Always a new generation. So we here at Northview... We could complete, we could completely change our county in 10 years. Let me tell you how. I mean, this is an absolute. 
If each one of us, I don't care how young, I don't care how old, I don't care what your cultural status is, I don't care about your pocketbook, I don't care about your health, I don't care about any of those things. What I care about is your faith in the Lord and the prayer that you will pray. If we devoted ourselves to prayer and begged God, literally, that we would, each one of us would beg God to give us one person to disciple, to help them to follow Jesus in one year, work with them for, for one year, and then in year two, so let's just say there's, a, there's not 100 people here today, I don't believe, but I'm just, that's my number. If there were 100 people here, to, we had over 100 last week. I don't see the number up there. But anyway, if we had 100 people, then a year from now, if the Lord gave each of us one person to teach how to follow Jesus, and, we, and then next year we started with how many? 200. And then that would be year two. And year three would be how many? And, the, and then year four would be? 800, okay. So um, uh, year five would be what? 1,600. And year six would be 3,200. And year seven would be? Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. thank you. I heard it somebody. And, 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 and year um, uh, nine? We've already exceeded the population of our county. Plus, we're not the only church in the county <laughs> that love Jesus and that want to see, peop- want to see people come to know Him as Lord and Savior and follow Him and to be obedient to Him. It's not as if our world is such a place that it's so bad that it can't be reached for Jesus. Is that the heart of people in the church get complacent and get sleepy and aren't on the job? We just want to be passive. So many times we want to be passive and go to church, but we're not looking at it in such a way that how can we reach our world for Jesus? But then, you know, that gets big and that gets cluttered and that gets confusing and it gets overwhelming. But Lord, give me one person. Give me one person. And everybody takes their one person person literally and and it it never works out perfectly this is ideal thing i understand that but literally a world or a county in this case can be changed in less than 10 years even when the world around it is becoming more exceedingly evil you see that's what did with the roman culture the church came into existence at the perfect time in history so that it could infiltrate the cultures of the world, so that as they continued to degrade and decline and become more evil, the church would rise up and take care of the mess that the world is leaving behind, and the Lord will glorify himself and glorify his name, so that the church becomes, it's not our church, that Jesus says, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So I'm wondering, this isn't really complicated, it's really desire. Would each of us commit to pray, Lord, begging the Lord, give me one person to teach him how to follow Jesus. What was it Paul said? Follow me as I follow Christ. That's what we say. So now you, now you need to be a disciple that's worth following, right? If you're not a disciple that's worth following, that's probably not a pretty good prayer. So take care of business, right? Daily, we surrender ourselves to the Lord, and then we can say, if we're in a surrendering of a relationship with the Lord, we're in the right place. If we're not in a surrendering relationship with the Lord, we're not in the right place. So daily, surrender to the Lord. Say, Lord, if you will use me, I'm a willing servant. One year to train a person to be, as Jerry Paul taught us back in June, a Christian, right? A Christian. So it is possible. It takes faith. 
It takes prayer, a desire, Lord, use me, a tenacity, a stubborn tenacity, <clears throat> a willingness to say yes to God. Here I am, Lord. Here I am. So this Tuesday, September 5th, it's our day to pray for Branch County. <clears throat> and so I'm asking you again, will there be more of you who will join the nine that signed up last month? We had every watch hour uh, covered. Our goal is to have at minimum three people for every watch hour. That way one could take an hour and that we would have all 24 hours covered. But that's not where we're starting. We're starting at the beginning, so one per watch hour and then two per watch hour and then three per watch hours is where we're heading. Because when the church prays and asks God and begs God, Lord, may your mighty hand move on your behalf, building your church, God works in incredible ways. So, as we've done for the last two weeks, we're going to do it again today. If you haven't been here in the last couple of weeks, you can take your bulletin or a piece of paper. And uh, we're going to show a video, and it's called The Three Circles. We've watched it for two weeks. And what's going to happen with this assignment this week is, the assignment for the last two weeks has been, watch it. Watch it again, watch it again, watch it again. The assignment this week is practice with a friend. It could be your spouse, it could be a friend, but just practice with somebody. Hear yourself saying these words. And it's all a part of getting ready and being prepared to share your faith when you get the opportunity. So just let me give you just a general overview. You'll recognize it if you've been watching it. Number one, the world is broken. But number two, that wasn't God's original plan. Number three, he made a way out for, of our brokenness. No matter how broken we are, and we can be healed. Turn to Jesus. Believe in him. Be baptized into him. Discover his healing grace and be restored to his original design. And then we can tell others about his plan. So if I read that real fast, I could probably do it in 15 seconds. But uh, that's, that's the essence. Okay, so... Uh, here we are. You ready? All right, Dave. You know, the reality is all of us live in this broken world. We only have to turn on the news to see suffering, death, war, disease, addictions. It's everywhere, isn't it? But this is not God's original design. God has a perfect design, a world full of love, joy, peace, and unity. And the way that we've gotten ourselves into brokenness is through something the Bible calls sin. Sin is turning away from God's design and pursuing our own way. And these sins separate us from God. They, they throw us into brokenness. And brokenness eventually leads us to death. And this death will separate us from God forever. So people try all kinds of different things to get out of brokenness. They, they might try drugs or alcohol or chasing a career or money or bullying other people or relationships, but none of these things ever actually fix the problem of brokenness. In fact, it's like a bungee cord. We just get snapped straight back again and again into brokenness. And ultimately, if people die in that state, separated from God, well, that's a permanent state, eternal. That place is often called hell. But God didn't want to leave us in that place. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to make a way out for us. Jesus came down to earth to put an end to our brokenness. In fact, he willingly entered into our brokenness to restore God's perfect design. How did he do this? By living a perfect life, Jesus took our place in death and died on a cross as our sacrifice. And God saw this as acceptable, allowing Jesus' a sacrifice to account for our brokenness. So it canceled out our sin. Jesus crushed it. But three days after he died, he rose from the dead. And by doing so, he made a way out of brokenness for us. God said that if we turn from our sin and believe that Jesus died for us, we can leave brokenness, be buried with him through baptism into his death in order that just as Christ was raised, 
we too may live a new life so that we can grow in a relationship with God and be restored back into his original design. Then we're able to go, to be sent, just like Jesus was sent back into brokenness to help others come through him to pursue God's design. We can become like new creations. We are like a new person in Christ. So there are really only two kinds of people in the world. There are people who are pursuing God's design and people who are still in brokenness. So we have to ask ourselves, where are we? And I'm wondering, where do you think you are and where would you like to be? So a simple three-minute presentation, if you can get that down, then it, can, it just gives you a, a, a little seed to plant with somebody that you're talking with. And then, of course, we've been talking about your own story. Being able to tell your own story uh, about how you were broken, in what ways were you broken, and how the Lord has brought restoration and healing to you. And be able to tell that story in one minute. It's easy for you to tell you the story in ten minutes because you don't have to be disciplined in how you tell your story. But if you only have a moment, you could actually tell God's story and tell your story in just in less than five minutes uh, if you have the opportunity. So it's all about being prepared and saying, Lord, we know you want you to use us, but how is he going to use a tool that's not prepared? And so that's what I've been wanting to do over the last several weeks is to one step at a time slowly train us that we can do this because we are praying for God to raise up a new generation, aren't we? We are praying for God to raise up workers for the harvest, aren't we? Lord, build your church. We are praying for God to give us one person to train for Jesus for the following year. Are we going to make that commitment today? I don't hear an overwhelming response. We are praying for God to give us courage and to speak boldly, right? The last two weeks, that's what the church in Acts chapter 4 did. In the face of persecution, Lord, give us courage to speak boldly. We're praying for our country. We're praying for the breath of God to blow across our land. You see, the church in the first century focused on ways to daily speak for the Lord, teaching and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. That's how the fifth chapter ends. It's what we talked about last week. The church focused on ways daily to speak of the Lord, teaching and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. It's not that we're too busy. It's not that we're too busy. It's that we're not focused. If you want to get something done, give it to a busy person. Have you heard that before? If you want to get something done, give it to a busy person because they're focused and they get things done. If you don't want to some, get something done, give it to a lazy person. They've got plenty of time to do it, but they won't ever get around to it. I'm procrastinating. Yeah. Well, we're being trained for the most important mission on this, in this world because you know what? Jesus is coming back. And people are going to hell because their souls are not saved. And we, we get to be healing agents that God uses. Lord, give me one soul. That's all you got to pray for, personally. One soul. And it, it can happen in the most odd ways. That's the way God works many times, in odd ways. It happens, sometimes it happens without you even knowing that it happened. And it just you look back and go, Look at that. God's been at work for the last two weeks. I didn't see it till now. And so it, it comes from a heart of desire, a heart of passion to want God and to want his way and to want his will. And we don't have to ask for the whole pie. We just need to ask the Lord for one slice. That's all we ever need anyway, isn't it? One slice of pie. Lord, I'd like to have seconds. So let's ask the Lord for the one. Now, Wednesday night, we're kicking off our Wednesday night gathering for the fall. We're not going to have a meal. We're going to start at 7 o'clock. There's going to be a video, scriptural teaching, and prayer. 
We're going to watch the first part of a three-part video about the fastest growing church in the world. You will be interested, I'm telling you. you and we're going to meet in here. We're not going to meet in the fellowship hall. We're going to meet in here, put the video up on the screens, and uh, you'll be interested to find out how and why and who. And if you truly are interested in raising up a new generation, you will want to be a part of our Wednesday night study. Calling uh, all of us, calling all of us out of passivity, out of sleepiness. But I don't want it to be my call. Do you hear, has the Lord spoken to you today? And I'm wondering, Will you say yes to Jesus? Isaiah in chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the entire temple. And above him were the seraphim, with each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, and two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying, and they were calling out to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is filled with His glory. And at the sound of their voices, the doorposts and the thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Isaiah says, Woe to me! I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips. And I live along, among a people of unclean lips. Have you ever felt that way before? And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. And then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs from the altar. And with it, he touched my mouth. And he said, see, this has touched your lips and your guilt is taken away. And your sin is atoned for. What a beautiful picture of baptism. And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Well, whom will I send? Who will go for us? And Isaiah said, Here am I. Send me. And he said, Go and tell this people. Matt, uh, Jesus, in the last verses in the book of Matthew, said, Go and make disciples. Are we ready to be a part of God's big plan? I think so much of the time in the way that the church has been taught in America in the last few generations, it's been more of my plan, God's plan for me. What is God's plan for me? Forgive me, heal me, serve me. Me, 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 me. I can make a song out of that. But I believe the Lord wants us to lift up our eyes to say, Lord, anything you want, anything you want, Lord, here I am. Anything you want, here I am. I've got a telephone. I can't go anywhere. I don't have the energy. I don't have the strength. I can't do it. But I've got a telephone. And boy, can I talk. Help me, Lord, to talk about the right things. There's no one that's exempt. The Lord knows exactly who we are. He knows our temperament. He knows how we're wired up. He doesn't expect us to be who we are not, but he does want us to be people of faith who will take steps of faith within who we are and who we've been created to be and to serve him and to speak for him. Amen. The worship team would come. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for being in our presence, or ha Lord, that we could be in your presence. Your glory has filled the whole earth. 
And Lord, we are joining you. And Lord, you have a personal assignment for each one of us. Help us, Lord, to be willing to pray for that one. To help them, Lord, to follow Jesus like I have followed Jesus. And if there's more to be added, help me, Lord, to learn more so I can add it to who you're wanting me to train and to pray for and to talk with and to because that's really all our assignment is for today. Lord, to want that one that we can reach out to. Thank you for your mercy and your grace and your patience, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing because Jesus is coming back, folks. Oh, what a day that's going to be. how the disciples felt when Jesus died, divided them up two by two and says, all right, you all are going to cast out demons. You're going to do uh, all this work and then you're going to come back and tell me your story. And they're going, what, what, what? We haven't done this yet. What are you talking about? You need to train us more. He says, no, you just need to go out and do. And then we'll figure it out after you've made a bunch of mistakes. <laughs> right? And that's what we're, many of us are afraid of. We're afraid of making mistakes. Right? So if we can get through that, get past that, the Lord is okay with us making mistakes. He was with the disciples. We saw it over and over and over and over again. Just be willing to do, right? Jude, the blessing from Jude. <laughs> to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you before his presence, in his glorious presence, without fault and with great joy to the only God. Our Savior, be glory and majesty and power and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. And the Lord's church says, Amen. 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 It is the cry of my heart to follow you. Here we go.
Amen. Have a great weekend, everybody. We will see you Wednesday night. Oh, and sign up if you want to be on that prayer list for Tuesday. The, um, it's out on the kiosk out there. Right? <laughs>